Hi, today we're going to work on working with clay. So I'm going to start with the materials. I have here a bag of clay. It's rather heavy. Um, it's actually just rock powder and water, but not just any rock. You can't just go to your garden and pull out the soil and make it into something and cook it. It won't harden. This is actually eroded igneous rock, meaning it's powdered lava but every molecule of lava has a molecule of water attached to it, which is why it's stretchy. So that's what we're going to be using. And what's cool about that is if you like what you make at the end, you can actually turn it back to stone in my kiln. So I'm going to cut some. This clay is from a manufacturer. Not that it's not what I said, but that it's been through a filter and it's also been through a de-airer. So there's no organic matter and there's no air bubbles. Now the reason I mention air bubbles is this clay has been used before. And if I cut it open, you can actually see there's a bubble there, there's a gap there, there's a gap there. If I put this in the kiln to cook, it would probably blow up and the reason for that is air and water when it's heated means that the water turns to steam and goes into the air chamber and the steam creates pressure because it's heating up and then it can blow it apart so we spend a lot of time with pottery working out how to not put air inside what we do so if i was to use this clay that's been used before i need it up and de-air it i won't show you that today but the stuff that comes fresh from the block has already been done through a machine and you can see that there's no air bubbles in it even if I stretch it, which means that this is much better to use. So when I cut clay, I don't cut a little tiny slither and then fold things over because that's trapping air. Instead, I always work with a chunk and I do a lot of slapping and shaping that doesn't involve poking. All right, we might move on to tools if that's okay and we'll get back to making in a minute. Okay, so this is my clay and before I work with it, I'm going to prepare it, which basically means it's best to just slap it into a ball. So hit it really hard, try not to fold anything over and basically make it as round as possible. So if you go whack, it will make it flat, but if you curve a bit, you'll actually be able to make it more round. So if I spend enough time doing this, eventually I'm going to end up with a ball. Okay, but just to go um, off to the side for a moment, that is only one tool, my hand. I've got plenty of other tools, so we might want to talk about some of them. You saw the cutting wire? Now, I just use fishing line. Some people use wire, but it's really useful to cut clay with a cutting wire. So it just slides straight through and cuts it like butter. And now this piece might be useful if I put it into a coil to be some part of my project later. As well as a cutting wire, I often have a wooden stick for shaping, a knife for cutting, a needle tool for inscribing or for poking and I don't always just use the main end I often use both ends of the tool depends what I want to do and this is called a rubber kidney this is for smoothing however if you're going to do this at home you might not have all of the official pottery tools that doesn't mean you can't do it just means instead of a kidney you go and use that gift card that's got no money left on it anymore and it does a really good job of smoothing or I'm going to make up and give with everyone these little kits so there will actually be a wooden tool for shaping and grooving a knife a skewer for putting holes in things and a sponge for smoothing and a peg that will be split in half and the fishing line tied onto it and that will be your cutting wire. So you'll get to keep these at the end of the project. So it doesn't matter if you don't have the official ones, but what you do need is a selection of things. So these will be supplied as part of the project with clay 
and if you like what you make at the end of it you can arrange to bring it to my studio for firing also there are a couple of other little things that you could probably find around the house that help one of them is an old toothbrush considering we're supposed to change them every three months I'm pretty sure you could get hold of one of these at your house so rather than throw it in the bin bring it into your art kit and we use this for joining I'll show you in a minute and the other one is the old laundry spray bottle can be really good for applying water one of the biggest mistakes that people make with pottery is adding too much water so that's a way of controlling it I usually only use a spray bottle or a squeezed out sponge I never have a big bucket of water on the table it one it gets knocked over and two it means you'll make your work too soft and it won't stay where you put it that's it for tools but I'm now going to work on the project here I have a piece of fishing line and a peg this is going to be my cutting wire so what I'll do is I'll just slide these out of the little metal thing and what's cool about the peg is it's already got a notch in it which means if you tie the wire to the notch it won't actually slide once you're trying to use it as a cutting wire and I'm just going to wrap it around twice and then carefully knot this now if you find this difficult ask an adult or a sibling to help you pull it as tight as you can so it's gone round twice and then pulled tight then I'm going to knot it once and then again now you don't need to cut off this um, end bit but it can be a bit of a nuisance so I tend to get the scissors and cut that a little bit shorter and then I have to do the same on the other end so and I don't know why but if you go around twice it seems to be easier to tie it if you go around once it just keeps moving so go around twice pull it tight and then loop it through itself and pull it really really tight and then go once more and once for good luck so basically it's a double knot and then again cut away any excess and this little guy is perfect for any future clay projects and also play-doh plasticine and anything else that's gooey so it works really well straight through like that and remember don't cut small pieces always big chunks you're less likely to get an air bubble thanks going to turn this clay into something now I'd like to make a vessel now here's an example of a vessel this one I actually use for my coffee quite often but also I don't always like my vessels to be boring sometimes I like interesting glazes and sometimes I like to make the bottom different than you thought it was going to be okay so I've cut a little bit of the clay away and put it to the side because I might need to add things on and I need a ball of clay that's not too big, otherwise I can't handle it properly with my hands. And my hands are large and most children's hands are usually a little bit smaller. So I'm just gonna keep on slapping it until I'm really, really happy with my ball. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my thumb and dig it right down inside, really hard to the bottom, but I'm not going to poke it through the bottom. And what I'm going to do is it's called a pinch pot, but the difference between pinching and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to pinch and stop. So I suppose it should be called a squeeze pot. So what I'll do is leave my thumb in the middle and then gently squeeze down low. And what happens is the clay starts to stretch. Now this is a really old technique. I think that before humans knew that they could fire pottery, they would have found clay by the side of a river and just pinched out a little shape and then put nuts and berries in their little vessels. So it's really old and there's techniques for pinch pots that still get used in tribal type um, communities and there's also primitive pottery which can be done as a modern technique as in with a history involved in the making process. So what I'm doing, as you can see, is I'm gently stretching and making it into a form so it still looks like a ball on the outside but I'm getting more and more 
um, thin on the walls. Now I don't want that crack, so I'm going to smooth it over. The other thing is, as I say thin, take that with a pinch of salt because we want it to be at least a centimetre thick. You don't want to squeeze it so thin that it can't hold its own weight. So you still need to leave some clay there. So now that I have this form, it could be the beginning of something. Now I can work straight on a table. I could work on a Lazy Susan that mum uses for decorating cakes. Or sometimes I use a little spinner. This one here is called a banding wheel. I like this because I can put my work up here and work evenly. However, an upside down ice cream tub would do exactly the same job and you just move the ice cream tub. So if you don't have what I have, you can still work on something by kind of sticking it down gently into the middle and then turn the thing or whatever it is so that you can have an even thing. It also works in your hands. Anyway, this is a good start for something, but possibly not quite big enough if I want this to be a drinking cup, for instance. So what I'm gonna do is hold my wire really tight and trim a little bit off the top. And the reason I'm doing that is to have a nice flat, but fresh clay edge so that I can join another piece of clay on and make it taller. So what I'm gonna do is with some of my spare clay, it should be in a chunk, not a slither. I'm gonna squish it into a sausage. Just pop that off to the side for a minute. And what I'm gonna do is roll my sausage on the table and turn it into a coil. Now, everybody makes flat coils when they first learn how to do it. But I don't want this flat, I want it round. So what you have to do is pretend you're a hovercraft, make your hands really stiff and skim over the top of the clay, not put downward pressure, forwards pressure. So it's the amount of times it actually rolls that will make a round coil, not how much weight you put on it. Now, if it goes a funny shape, you can tap it back to more like square and then continue. Now, if you find that that's difficult, the other option is stand up because for some reason it's more comfortable to do it standing than it is sitting. But now I have a coil. Now, you do not want your coil to be teeny. You want it to be chunky because it will then mean when you join it onto the other thing, it will stretch. So, how am I gonna join this to that? I don't know if anyone's made pottery before, but you've probably done plasticine or Play-Doh. Now, if you had a piece of Play-Doh and you stuck an arm on your little guy, okay, I've got an arm. And then what happens next time you come past, falls off, which means that's not joined properly. And if you want this thing to actually be good and strong, it has to be joined properly. So what I do with all my little scraps of clay that I'm not currently using, is I make a tiny little pinch pot and I spray a tiny bit of water and I get my recycled toothbrush and I make some glue. So this is how I make clay glue. The good thing about this is at the end of the day, I don't have to do much cleanup because I can just put that back in with my spare clay. But right now, it'll make it a lot easier for me to join two things together. So I'm going to turn that into like yogurt and then I'm going to put it along the surface so what I'm doing is putting slip which is what this liquefied clay is called and I'm also scoring or scratching the surface so this is called slip and score and I'm using the one tool to do both things one is the application and the other is the scratching to then add an extra layer I'm going to measure this and while it's on there, I'm gonna cut them at the same time on an angle so that if I take that one away and that one away, it fits good, okay? And then I'm also going to scratch and score the underside of this clay before I join it on. So joining is the most important thing to do right besides not having air bubbles. Those two things are quite useful because if they both work, 
I'm going to join this together. Yeah, if both the joining is good and there's no air bubbles, it will make it through a kiln. Okay, so now I'm going to pop that back onto here and then gently press downwards and turn. Like I said, you could be on an upside down ice cream tub, an upside down bucket, or if mum's willing to let you borrow it, the lazy Susan from the kitchen. Okay, so once I've pressed it on, I'm pressing quite firmly and squeezing. That is not a good enough join. I also need to get my wooden stick tool and actually scratch over the edge to make the one piece of clay connect with the other. And lots of repeated overlapping strokes, not too firm. Now you can do this with your finger, but I find the wood grabs it better, which is why everyone's been given wood in their kit. So also on the inside as well as the outside. So I'll try and do it where you can see. So it's really important that it's joined. If you want to smooth it for neatness, don't worry about that at this point. Just don't press too deep and we can do neatness after. So it's kind of like surface first and after you're happy with your construction, you can neaten it up. So that's now made my pot taller and much more suited to a vessel. Now this vessel could be used as a mini flower pot, a teacup, a hot chocolate cup. It could also be changed into a different shape. So I'm gonna smooth it a bit more and I'll talk to you about shape and design in a minute. Okay, I've just moved mine off my Lazy Susan or banding wheel onto an ice cream tub because you might not have one. So maybe an old yogurt container, an ice cream tub, or even two cooking trays with some marbles in between will make something spin. So just to show you that you don't have to necessarily have all this stuff to make something work but I'm interested in being able to work on all sides easily. Now often if I want something to go up it's hard to do that when I'm seated so if I want it to get taller I stand because then I can actually work on the other side and I can squeeze and push it inwards so that it gets a little taller. I'm trying to do this evenly so with the flat of my fingers rather than the pinches of my fingers. Flats are better. And once I'm happy with how my form is looking, then I might think about, well, what do I want to do to it now? Do I want a handle? Do I want a foot? Do I want a nicer surface? Now this gift card is really good for smoothing. So I'm gonna put my fingers inside and smooth upwards and then it will actually make all my fingerprints from before disappear so it ends up having a much much nicer finish and you can do it on the inside too but just be aware that if the inside is curved and this is not curved might dig in so if it is actually a gift card that doesn't have any money on it you can get the scissors and cut it cut one end round that's okay I think I've even got some here here we go so I just want to make the end round so basically turning this tool into a version of this tool and now when I work on the inside I can actually smooth using that curve and that'll make the inside nice and smooth as well now I don't know if you've noticed but I've hardly added water that's really really important you don't need to add water at all except in the form of clay glue and any other water is at the very end with a damp but squeezed out sponge just for surface smoothing but also your fingers do really good surface smoothing so now that that looks like a form, I'm gonna have a little think. Do I want to drink from this? If I do, that is gonna feel really weird on my mouth because it's chunky. It's much nicer to have a fine lip on a vessel that you drink from. So I'm going to use my fingers with a little V between the two and I'm going to squeeze the edge and make it thinner. Doesn't have to be the whole wall, but definitely the lip of the cup. 
and they have to overlap and repeat so that you get a similar finish all the way around. So I do a lot of things with control and sometimes it does take a little bit of practice, but just think even, slow and repeat, repeat, repeat. So that's a much nicer lip. If I was actually gonna drink from this, I would enjoy that a lot more. Okay, so it looks like a cup. Do I want this cup to have a handle or do I want it to have a pig snout, a curly tail and some funny ears? That's what we can do with our spare clay. So I might cut a little piece for the handle. Chunky is better. And then I'm going to make my sausage again. Um, for rolling a coil. Always make space in front of yourself to do that. Make sure there's no water. Roll it. You need space. If it goes not round, tap it round and continue. Okay, so I think that's heaps big enough for a handle. Resist the urge to make a handle really skinny because if it's too skinny, it might not be strong enough to hold the pot. I'm gonna use my knife and cut it a little bit shorter. And then I actually don't like it, that shape. So how am I gonna flatten it? I could use this and just squish it a bit. So what I've got now is more of a strap, but I think that will make a good handle. Now, if it is gonna be a curly pig's tail, I can also twist it. But I think I want it to still also be a handle. So I'm gonna actually join it on a bit like that. All right, I don't need that much clay and I need a big patch and I put a kick on the end and I'll use a bit more clay glue. Get some more on my brush, put it on here, put it on here and then the bit I wanna join it to. So always remember when you're trying to join something together, more is better. Think cream on a scone rather than uh, low fat cooking. We don't want low fat cooking for this. Now I'm gonna press with my hand behind it and then press again with my hand behind it. Now it likes to flop when you add things. So I might end up having to put a a prop under it. I'm just going to move this over a tiny bit so that that's supported there. And I'll just smooth that in a bit more. So this is going to be my curly whirly pig tail cup which means it needs a snout now. And what I could do for the feet instead of this is actually put hooves on it. So that would be fun. Now I will talk about the weather too. In Winter, pottery doesn't dry fast. So if it's flopping or not staying where you put it, what you can do is actually just drape something over it and go away and come back later. But if you wanted to keep working and it's not dry enough, you might be able to take it near a heater or ask mum if you can borrow the hairdryer and just dry it a little bit and then it'll stay in the shape that you put it a little bit easier. All right, so if this is gonna have pig ears and a pig snout, I'm using some of my spare clay. I'm going to shape it into an ear shape. And then I'm gonna use more clay glue and stick it on to my rim. That's one ear. And then the other one as well, squish it. I just cut it this way, but if it wasn't the right shape to begin with, you cut out a triangle or squish a piece flat and actually cut out a piece. Always plenty of glue. Anytime it dries, add more water. You can actually just have a tiny little glass of water on the table if you haven't got a spray bottle, but I just like them because you can limit how much water. Okay, and I'm smoothing it in really well so you can't see my joints. Okay, and now, so with a curly tail and ears, it just needs a snout, doesn't it? 
Oh, I'm running out of clay. Here's a couple of bits. Now, if I want to join two pieces together, press them together really hard and try not to catch an air bubble. Okay, so now I'm making it into a snout shape. Now, the back end of things can be good for making nostrils. So for instance, um, the back of my toothbrush might make some good divots. And then he's gonna go on there. All right, so I'm gonna stick it on. By the way, if you do something with ears, do think about the fact that if I do drink out of this, I don't wanna poke myself in the eye, so try to keep it off to one side, all right? So, a bit more here. Need a bit more glue and stick it on. I suppose it needs eyes now too. Now, if you want everything to look really smooth, you can use your wooden tool and actually get rid of any lines between things and go around and join well to the form. So the more you work things, the better they end up and then you can come in and smooth that as well. Um, you don't actually want to see your joints, but it's really good to work them because if you work them, that piece will definitely not come off and it'll look like it was intentional, but you can't see where it was added. Okay, so what does it need? It needs eyes and feet. Here's the rest of that coil I made for the handle. I think they would make fantastic little trotter feet for it. So. I'm going to cut it into four little bits. One, two, three, four. Now, they'll need to be attached to the bottom and it's a bit too soft. So, I suggest if you get to this point and you want to add to the bottom, take a break. Okay, I want to turn this over and put the feet on, but it's a little bit on the flexible side. So, I'm a bit worried that if I do that, I'll actually damage the work that I've done already. So rather than just turn it straight over, I have to work out how can I do that without damaging it. Option number one is dry it with a hairdryer. Option number two is stuff some newspaper in it and turn it over, but make sure that the ears are actually hanging off down the edge so they don't get damaged. Does that make sense? So if you don't have a hair dryer, you could, yeah, use some newspaper bunched up in there, but I'm gonna dry this one. So I'll just start doing that and we'll get back to you in a minute. It takes a while. <laughs> 